What's good, Hummer Squad? It's your boy Hummer Ziggy. We back here with another reaction for y'all. And today we got a video by this channel called Fantastic Hip Hop. And I ain't gonna lie, this is kind of, in a way it's kind of like how Luesta does his, but I'm pretty sure it might be different. That's how I live, saying. And this is one, and this is one that just pull out the out the normal saying. And this one is why Drake's just said he's given up on rap. Now, even though this was seven days ago and such, the point is, let's be honest. People, are, we are still in the midst of this whole Drake getting slaughtered by the whole industry and such. Let's be honest. From Metro Boomin, from Future, the other per the other rappers and such like uh, ASAP Rocky, Travis Scott and so and such, to Rick Ross, and now finally with Kendrick and such. Hey, the whole industry is getting on Drake right now and such. And hell, just recently I just sorry I heard y'all probably heard some cars out there, but just recently freaking Childish Gambino. Apparently dissed him on one of his new songs and such on his album and I see that Fantastic hip-hop made a video on that one. So rest assured if this video does well I'm gonna check out that one and such But hey, you know, we have to still be on that top about <laughs> Kendrick slot and I guarantee you people still think still to this day Think that Drake still won and such nah <laughs> Nah he didn't as a pr and this is ain't me being a stand or anything this is just straight up Kendrick whoop that nigga <laughs> but either way we about to check this video out make sure you like comment and subscribe follow me on my socials up there and without further ado let's get into this video now with another week going by where Kendrick Lamar is not like us has only Now with another week going by where Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us has only broke more records as it's reclaimed its spot as the number one song in the world on the Billboard Hot 100 and also became the fastest rap song to ever surpass 500 million streams on Spotify. Drake has continued to stay on the hot seat as the anthem of the summer continues to dominate the world and beyond- Hey, I said this to myself. You all, you know whenever you listen to an I literally just said this to myself right before I started this reaction. You know when every song that you listen to, whether it's hip hop, reggae, R and B, whatever, right? There's always so much quotables in a song where you can like repeat to yourself, even if it's not on like the melody type and such, you could just say to yourself once in a while you could just hum it and such, right? Whether it be like the actual lyrics or even just the beat of the song. Anywhere, right? But bro, rest assured, there are so many quotables in that song in Not Like Us, but bro, you could be just quoting that shit anytime where you want. Let me hear you say, oh, we ho, oh, we ho, beat your ass in Bible, beat your, hold on, beat your ass and hide the Bible if God watching. Sometimes you just pop out and start doing this. Certified boogie man, I'm the one that up the score with him. Walking down, hook, like, bro. Say, Drake, I hear you like young. You never ever go to sell a black one. Like, bro, there are so many quotables in that song that nigga, you cannot get this. And, think, and the craziest thing is, people will replay that song. I mean, think about it. Remember, in that concert, we played up to five times. And people was not getting sick of that shit. <laughs> I mean, hell, you know what? Let me just this go this on. rap song to ever surpass 500 million streams on Spotify. Drake has continued to. And mind you, this song came out in May of this year. Two months within two months over the past two months, this song has been going crazy, and people are already calling this a classic. Cause I saw that like, bro, the fact that it's only been two months since this song came out and it's already been a fire ass song, 
crazy. To stay on the hot seat as the anthem of the summer continues to Sorry. dominate the world and beyond just the ever looming presence of Kendrick Lamar and his dominance in this moment in time. On Drake's direct end of things, he is continuing to spiral out further and further and while with the recent release of songs, features, and public appearances alike that have all left most people with the same impression which is that Drake seriously needs to take 10 steps back and completely rethink the direction he is disastrously steering his career into. And despite this failure, making things as once valuable as the Drake stimulus package no longer being of any value as the once most coveted thing in the entire music industry in the Drake feature can't even get decently popular and established names in the music industry anywhere on the charts. Although all signs are indicating that whatever Drake's doing is not working out whatsoever. From what we have seen, it only looks like Drake is going to be leaning into these strategies even further, as he is trying to find more obnoxious ways to shift the narrative around him, which when we look at just how he is trying to shift the tides of his career, it'll make you wonder where he is trying to make any of this go. And when we really start to see what this latest part of his plan that is currently unfolding is, it'll make you question not just what Drake is going to be trying to lift up from his sleeve next, but how consequential the effects could be if what he is teasing does not deliver to these expectations that he himself is trying to build up so high and high. So when it comes to these expectations that Drake seems to be setting, they took the cultural conversation over the other night, went on what seems to be his favorite way of communicating in this post-beef era of his career, which is of course Instagram. Drake made a cryptic post that said in the caption, the pressure from being on top does yes, more than just... just I saw this on Instagram with this damn shirt saying rap is a joke. <laughs> nah, the pressure from being on top does more than make your ears pop. <sighs> First of all, no Diddy, what you mean by that? Second of all, I don't know nigga, from ever since then, you've been getting chopped down from your the way how people used to react to you and such is getting questionable. That's all I'm saying. Make your I mean, ears get it, pop. People are still going Which to is once again it, showing it's still Drake his sense of achievement that nobody else besides him and his circle seem to recognize as he is acting like he is this untouched artist when we all just know from what we have seen very recently that he is yeah. not and he's actually way closer to being the laughing stock of the music industry right now than he is to being on top. But beyond yeah, just right. this, what makes this post even worth talking about beyond just scrolling and laughing is not this caption or the timing of it, but instead is the actual picture Drake posted, which features him repping a shirt that says, rap is a joke. And now initially, the reaction to this on social media was that Drake is now turning his back on hip hop as a whole, and because of the beef, he is gonna be a sore loser and act like rap does not matter to him anymore. Which while I definitely think it was part of Drake's intentions to throw people off with this shirt and make them think this to once again stir up this frantic sort of buzz about how he is moving after this beef. And of course, to just put his name back into the conversation. This shirt actually has uh, a much no. deeper meaning and I think it's hinting at the fact that despite what seems like Drake's career getting so messy to the point that he will never recover, he is on some level aware of this and is trying to do something to change it. But the question really is, is doing something like this even close enough to help yourself and with this shirt? What it is, is a piece of merchandise from L Money and Frank Stack's group, which is called Rap Is A Joke. And with these two names, why would you even have that as a, why would you even have that as a name for your rap group, bro? Rap Is A Joke. And why would you even wear that shirt? Whatever. From L Money and Frank Stack's group, which is called Rap Is A Joke. And with these two names, what is interesting about them is that these two are battle rappers who border on being parodies of the genre in of itself with how comedic their lyrics are and with how they mock the general music industry. And these aren't just any battle rappers, but they're also from California as well. And with Drake leaning into this often overlooked scene. Okay, now that's a good, that's a good expected right there. They're from California too. And with the likes of Kendrick and the game and whatnot and such, they're from California, but respectively, once from Compton, they don't, I don't know which which part of California the game's from. Regardless, that's kind of crazy that that's another way of putting it and such, because I was wondering 
why the hell would he wear a shirt like that and such? But they're also from California as well. And with Drake leaning into this often overlooked scene of the hip hop world in general, it seems like in his typical petty way, he is trying to once again begin to escalate tensions with Kendrick on some level. And in the greater sense, the entire West Coast who is backing him by aligning yeah, with artists cool. that do not get the attention that so much of the rest of the rap world does. But even if this is a smart move in a vacuum, and if Drake was gonna try to rip the rug under and take over California's battle rap scene, as a tactical move, it actually could be pretty clever. At the end of the day, is debuting this move by wearing a shirt on Instagram the right way to go about it? Yeah, you gotta realize, with Drake, the only way he knows, to me, this is just me, and maybe I'm not knowledgeable that and such, but I'm just saying on me, that's for when people want to start taking shots at people, if it's not musically, it's with social media, that's how most people are going to, in a way, like I said, just take shots at you and such, because with, and with, with Drake, this nigga be posting a whole lot of captions and shit on his posts and his stories on social media and such, like, nigga, why you think most people are gonna clown on you about enough with the captions, I want the act, like Kendrick probably, like Kendrick said and not like us, well, I'm probably paraphrasing, but enough with the captions, nigga, we want the action, like, goddamn. Hey, viewing this move by wearing a shirt on Instagram the right way to go about it? Maybe if you were in some general internet drama, it could be? But as a major rapper in a space where everything of note should be settled with a pen and with your skills as an artist, this is just another move from Drake that as it stands in the moment, makes it look like his social media posts are better thought out and curated than any of the actual diss tracks and music as a whole that he has released recently. As with there being more layers to dissect here than on a track like The Heart Part 6 for example, it's just a horrible look, there is no other way around it. And now beyond just this post, which, if anything, is indicating that Drake is the most calculated IG postmaker in hip-hop, I guess. <laughs> Another I thing guess, Drake has yeah. seemed to do is once again use one of his biggest cheerleaders in DJ Academics as a puppet. Forget pu forget cheerleader, this nigga is the... You were gonna talk about a D-writer. Boy, this nigga is an ultimate... This nigga is the ultimate D-writer for Drake. As After Act finally came out and criticized Drake, as he shockingly proclaimed that the Drake feature is no longer a valuable thing in the music industry, he came right back out not too long after, and was already beginning another trail of hyping up new music from Drake and saying that what he is about to come next with will be groundbreaking, which based on just the timing of this, and what we know in terms of Drake being in constant communication with Act, just seems a little strange and really feels like Ak was told by Drake to start saying positive things about his music again so he can push the agenda that no matter what has happened, we should all be on board for what Drake is about to do next as it is going oh, to be no. special. And I think in this moment, with this being the road that we're on, through cryptic social media posts and the agenda pushing of the easily deceivable major players in hip hop media, Drake is trying to take all of this and allude to this major moment that he is going to try to be coming soon with. But the problem is right now, it's not that Drake couldn't necessarily produce a piece of music that can change everything and elevate his career into a place where he is once again invited back into any sort of serious conversations on some level, but it's the constant gaslighting and manipulation that has led most people into rightfully thinking that despite him trying to get the hip-hop world moving for his next big moment, he will just not actually deliver something that will be able to even come close to the bar of quality that he needs to reach with the stakes being this high, because this has been the game all along for Drake. I mean, during this entire beat, Drake used social media and the attempted control of hip-hop media to do the work that his music could not on its own, and try- Yeah, like, nigga. If you're a rapper and you're in a rap beef with somebody, let the music- let- let the people who do the social media stuff, let them determine to see if it's good or not and such, to see who's winning or whatnot. You as the rapper should not be using this social media and such, because if you realize with Kendrick, throughout this entire beef, he only sticks to the music aspect. He hasn't gone on so, he hasn't went as soon as when he drops his, well I could be wrong, right, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that throughout this entire beef between him and Drake, whenever he drops his diss track, Kendrick drops his diss track, he waits until when Drake drops his. He don't be on social media just posting on such. 
But Drake, as soon as when he drops, as soon as when even Kendrick drops a diss track on him, he gonna find a way how to twist it and seem like it's a, seem like if Kendrick is whining and complaining and whatnot and such, when reality, no, nigga. <laughs> Drake doesn't think Kendrick has anything to drop. Use me as a they have nothing to drop button. <laughs> That's crazy. And the attempted control of hip hop media. To do the work that his music could not on its own and try to hype everything he was doing up as these moments that are so much bigger than any sort of expectations could ever live up to. And we especially saw this with a track like Family Matters, as everyone was waiting for Drake to deliver the red button that he kept teasing, and aside yeah. from the song not being anywhere near as career ending as he hyped it up to be, otherwise the beef would have been over right then and Yeah, he was teasing about how don't even push this red button and such, what was it, on, was it on Family Matters or so? one of his diss tracks and such talking about don't make me push this red button and such nigga people wanted you to push the red button and you and it was you was only just pushing the it didn't even feel like you was pushing the red button you felt like you it was mostly like a freaking yellow button you was pushing for yeah. It was of course then stomped by on a track in Meet the Grams that had no marketing or expectations and relied on the pure art of surprise and then the actual merit of its musical quality to back up the buzz it generated, and as a result of this organic way to promote the music, it ended up changing the tides of this feud in a way that Drake was never going to come back from, and that's the difference when it comes to where these two artists are at. Drake is using these cheap ploys and gimmicky tactics as a way to supplement for the lack of genuine quality in his music, and when these songs keep releasing, now they're all flopping because they are not just bad songs but they are tracks that come with this perception now of having to be something greater than they ever could even aspire to be. And as people have realized this and opened their eyes up to this because of the beef, it has now really damaged the Drake brand, and while he may be thinking that he is accomplishing something by still making these posts that we almost have to decipher, when we spend more time reading into Instagram posts than we are reading into the actual music itself, at this point, unless Drake comes with some of his best material ever, it will simply never reach this goal and he will only see more failure and while i want to say that if drake releases another song like anything he has this summer it may just really be the end of this guy i'm gonna hold out some optimism and say that maybe i will be wrong because if one good thing for drake has happened recently it is that during a recent performance at a club none other than lil wayne finally revealed whose side he is truly on in this beef with during his performance of the motto he was chanting they don't like us they don't like us while flaunting his ovo chain and despite Wayne having respect for Kendrick in the past, we can now see that he is riding with Team Drake, which really should have never been a surprise considering how close these two have I mean, hey, young money. Because <laughs> like you said, even though Drake has respect for Kendrick, look, at the end of the day, <laughs> that young money, that thing is never going to break out. Because let's be honest, out of that whole entire group between of young money, cash money and such, the only, the only true successful people we know that was gonna come out of that was Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, and Drake. Them were the only three we know that were gonna be successful, like really successful. Tiger, you can say, but he was on a, uh, uh. it was 50-50 with him. But them three, Drake, Wayne, Drake, Wayne, and Nicki, yeah, them three were the definitely. If you were to say who was the leader of Young Money, I would say it's a mix up, it's a difference between them three. You would have to pick between them three, because in, in my eyes, them three were more of the leaders of Young Money than just supposedly one leader. So, it wouldn't surprise nobody that Wayne was going to stick up That he Drake. is riding with Team Drake, which really should have never been a surprise considering how close these two have been since the start of Drake's career, despite what Kendrick said about their relationship on Not Like Us. But now that we know that Drake still does have one of the best rappers on the planet in his corner, who knows? Maybe if Drake locked in with Wayne, it could lead him onto some sort of road to redemption, but at the same time, as Drake seems to be teasing more upcoming music, that sounds a lot more like Honestly Nevermind too. I don't think that this Damn. is actually going to happen. Nobody like that. So with all that said, let me know. What do you think about what Drake is trying to pull off right now? And where do you think his career is going to go next as he is still trying to save his image? I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And if you want to see how Eminem just picked a side in the Kendrick and Drake beef as well, check out the suggested video. Hey, shout out to Fantastic Hip Hop.
I mean, let me first and put a little like there. But hey, he ain't telling no lies. Because look, at the end of the day, if you have to ask me, we all, like I said, we all know that Kendrick won this rap beat. But the thing, thing with Drake is, like he said, he's petty as hell, so he's not going to admit defeat, which is true. As a rapper, you got to make sure you know, especially if you're in a rap beef with somebody, you got to know that ain't no way you're going to think that you beat me and all that. But in reality, nigga, you lost. But hey, we'll see what happens with Drake. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments below. And like I said, shout out to a Fantastic Hip Hop for the video. I'll tag them down in the comments below. I'll tag them in the description below so that way you can go sh show them love and such. But either way, it's been your boy Homo Ziggy signing out. Stay positive and keep the vibes up. I'm out.